Now back with a science part seven. Oh my, that went pretty fast. In the past, I had signs episode 5-1 and 5-2 because I was just recording and making it in one go, but this time I'll just make it episodes 6 and 7, so it's not confusing. Oh, this episode was kind of hard to pick apart because of all the possible conclusions. Or maybe it wasn't hard to pick apart, but I was just sleepy, so it felt like a lot of work, and <laughs> I had to think a lot. Anyway, yeah, there was so much stuff, so I'll talk about it for a while. I'll just go through the whole episode in one go. To begin, on Marinette's side, the first thing that pops into her mind to turn Cat Noir away from thinking that she's Ladybug is saying that she's in love with him. She's good at coming up with all kinds of solutions. I thought maybe she could have said super fan, but no. After that, Kat even said, I just thought that she followed us everywhere because she's a fan of Ladybug like her friend Alia. That would be a completely normal excuse, which makes sense perfectly that you can come up with on the spot. Or even if Marinette said that she's a super fan of Cat. But for some reason, being in love was what she blurted out immediately, even though it could lead to some problems like we see in the episode. It's like it's screaming out from her subconscious. Then, Catnor did appear to be really happy after Marinette's fake confession. Do you realize? It's the first time that a girl's told me she's in love with me. <laughs> if only Ladybug would confess her love to me like that. Of course, he still thought about Ladybug first, wishing that she was the one that confessed all oh, the irony. But imagine a serious confession from Lila or from Chloe. I'm not sure he would react the same. Of course, there are bad qualities about them which might make him feel more annoyed receiving their confessions, though. But usually when people receive confessions from someone that's kind of normal to them, even for the first time, they could feel eh. Maybe a little surprised. They could feel confused and not know how to handle the situation or they might get an ego boost. Of course, maybe Adrian feels happy for the cat noir side of him because he's received love letters before as Adrian, but maybe August's face might show that it's not just about an ego boost. Maybe Lenny face. Cat was not really cocky about it either. Now back to Marinette. She got really upset at how cat noir was coming to Sunday brunch because she thought his love for Ladybug waned. They showed her mad about it at the beginning and during brunch. Is that all his love for Ladybug is worth? Just one tiny declaration of love and that's it, poof, he changes his mind? He seems like the kind of boy who changes his mind rather quickly. It's emphasized. She's really paying attention to the matter, like obviously she values his loyalty to Ladybug. If she didn't like him, no need to get so upset. Also, la 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 la. Oh, this is such a relief, Tiki. <laughs> He's not in love with me. Just happy about fixing her love declaration problem or because of Kat's loyalty to Ladybug. It wasn't just, phew, I avoided trouble, yay! She was twirling around her room. Look at that face. Look at this face when Tom was fanboying about Marinette's future with Kat Noir. She's a typical sundere. Also, she was directly saying it was such a relief that he wasn't in love with her and didn't directly say it was a relief that she fixed her problem. Even if she keeps rejecting me, even if she loves somebody else, I'm in love with Ladybug. Now I want to take a look at the short part of the conversation between Tiki and Marinette. After Marinette was complaining about how Cat Noir changed his feelings for Ladybug, Tiki said, Uh, since you and Ladybug are the same person, he didn't exactly change his mind. I think the dialogue represents two types of shippers. Tiki is moving in the direction of Marisha and says that technically it's okay if Kat, who's been rejected so much, moves on to Marinette instead because Mary and Ladybug are the same person anyway. And I think Adrian likes Marinette for some of the same reasons he likes Ladybug because they have similar qualities and vice versa with Ladybug and Kat. Marinette represents fans against Marisha because Kat should stay loyal to Ladybug. Which side do the creators support more? Well, Honestly, I think they're on Tiki's side for this. It's a fact that Tiki is typically the voice of reason. And the point is, Kat's been rejected so much. He's been rejected so many times by a ladybug. Maybe he's changed his mind. It's not healthy for the relationship. Also earlier in the episode, Plag similarly said, 
I don't see the problem in keeping two pots simmering on the stove. Especially when there's actually only one pot. <laughs> the difference between the Kwamis and our main characters is that the Kwamis know their identities, so of course they would think differently. I mean, now instead of pursuing their true loves and continuing to get hurt, they're turning toward the alternate love interests. Mr. Dupan, Mrs. Dupan Chang, Marinette, here's the thing. You're really nice people. Nice, says Marinette is nice. Good enough. Marinette, you're an awesome girl, and I Here we go. Marinette seems like an awesome girl too, you know? You seem like such an awesome person. <laughs> For some of these scenes, he was trying to make his rejection of Marinette less harsh, but he could have stuck to a less strong word like nice. And the thing is, he's called Marinette awesome or amazing on so many occasions. Not just this episode. Think back! You're amazing, Marinette. I'm sure you've come up with something awesome as usual. She's so awesome! She's a really awesome girl! In Stormy Weather 2, when talking about Ladybug, he said, She's really so amazing and classy. In Gamer 2.0, Cat Noir says, Ah, she's so awesome. That's how amazing you are. He's clearly more affectionate toward LB, but these same words are used. Also, a comparison. On the <laughs> Adragami side, when he starts to notice Ryuko, he says, Ryuko, as amazing and daring as I remember. Notice the word amazing being used again. You're amazing. A <laughs> real magician, Marinette. Oh, it was nothing. Uh, amazing? Really? Back to Marinette again. You're an awesome girl, and I get that you have feelings for me. She gasped, startled when he put his hand on her shoulder, but not in a back off kind of way. She noticed Adrian's hand on her shoulder in other episodes. In the older episodes, she dealt with Cat Noir's physical contact calmly or just removing his hand. I noticed that anytime she's more calm about the hand on shoulder thing is when she's being comforted when she's sad though. To Adrian again. Obvious, obvious signs everywhere. While fighting Where Dad, Cat says a bunch of things out loud regarding Marinette that he has never said about other people in danger during an Akuma fight. Even close friends. Things like, I will always be here to save Marinette. Not like, I will always be here to save people who need help. No, no. And, Not being in love with her, losing my stick, won't keep me from saving her. I'll never give up. Never. You can see and hear his persistence and determination. During the fight, Weird Dad growled, Someday, a prince will come, a prince worthy of her, daring enough to face me, who will brave the many dangers and pick the magic rose for her. He will be worthy of taking her from my guard. Guess who's braving the dangers and fighting for her now? He wasn't the one that picked the rose and Marinette was, to show that she doesn't always need a prince, which is cool, but the point is he's filling that prince role perfectly. That is his job as one of the heroes of Paris, but to have these lines about a prince for Marinette with these scenes focused on Cat Noir show something bigger than the hero role. In this episode, there seems to be a combination of fairy tales, which are Jack and the Beanstalk, Sleeping Beauty, and Beauty and the Beast. Jack and the Beanstalk is obvious, but I don't remember if I even noticed the other two when I first watched the episode. I have plenty on my mind back then, and first reactions many times reflect underdeveloped thoughts. Anyway, instead of a beanstalk, it's a giant rose-like thing, though. Where Dad seems like a beast keeping someone prisoner, don't take a rose from my garden, magic rose, and like in Sleeping Beauty, there were a bunch of thorns around. I'm less sure about Sleeping Beauty, but the surrounding thorns easily reminded me of it. I was trying to understand what the combination of these fairy tales mean for the episode. Well, we know that Jack climbed the beanstalk to get to treasure, which could, in this case, be Marinette. The giant, Weirdad, is guarding the treasure. The choice of Beauty and the Beast connects to what Adrian was saying about not keeping your children prisoner, relating it to himself. But also, roses symbolize love, especially the one in Beauty and the Beast. And it's the rose that Katnor gave Marinette, so it's shown as a special object. In Sleeping Beauty, the prince cuts through some thorns to get to Aurora. All of these stories seem to imply that Marinette is important to Adrian. Two of them have largely romantic implications. In the end screen, come on, there are hearts all over the place for some reason. Cat is looking at Marinette, and Marinette is looking down at the rose. Also, Marinette looking at it and smiling reminded me of how Adrian looked staring at her autograph at the end of Guitar Villain, which I talked about before. 
Man, that was a handful. But a delightful episode. We're not gonna let her rain on Paris' parade. Hey, was that a pun I heard, milady? Yep. A little change is good, don't you think? What caused this change? Even without this quote, it's noticeable that she makes more puns and jokes in front of Cat Noir later in the show. It's too much effort for me to go back and find Ladybug making puns, but there was one in Bakerix and one in Gamer 2.0. I heard other ones while I was watching scenes to collect signs, but didn't collect them and forgot where they were. The main thing is that this change in Ladybug was mentioned and probably happened because of her growing feelings for Cat as she matches his behavior. Aw, this look. We need to fully understand what this means, though. Earlier in Chameleon, remember, Marinette was complaining about having to sit in the back row, being against Lila. At the end of the episode, before class, Adrian told Marinette not to humiliate Lila, since that wouldn't improve her behavior, which softened her. When Adrian sat next to her, he said, Good for you for taking the high row, Marinette. So I think when Adrian saw that Marinette calmed down about Lila, was less resentful, peace over war, following what he'd said, he smiled at that. But that's a relatively long moment reserved for the stare. A quick look of surprise followed by, good for you for taking the high row, yada yada, would have been enough. Also, the chosen music that was playing in the background was more lovey-dovey. Replace the scene with Nino, Alia, Chloe, weird. He could have smiled at how she looked more happy and more at peace too. That happy to see her happy. This was a really obvious one though. Speaking of looks that Adrian gives Marinette, after Marinette let out a yawn on the train, this is how he reacts. Like I said in the first part of my Science Part 5 video, Adrian has a different reaction from the others to Marinette. Most of the people are laughing, except maybe Lila because she doesn't like Marinette. But Adrian's just surprised and then smiles like this. <laughs> they emphasized Adrian's reaction, showing his face up close when it was completely unnecessary to show how he feels about her yawning. And then he decides to rest his head on her in return with a smile? What? Didn't have to lean on, didn't have to lean in. They're friends, but I still don't feel like they're that close. No awkwardness with her head on him. Just the smile, then comfortably resting back on. Aww. You really think it's time to invite me to the cinema? Sorry, kitty. Only got one ticket. I'll come back soon. What is this? What is this? At the beginning of this episode, Zag showed us the quick scene with Adrian and the bracelet he made for Marinette again, but it didn't have any significance later in the episode. They just showed the scene from the Bafana with him giving her the bracelet to indicate the timeline and that's about it. Remember the rest of the episode was about Lila framing Marinette and getting her expelled, and then about the ladybug scent monster. In other words, they included this extra type of scene for another reason, not for the episode plot. They had Adrian ask Plag for his opinion about it, and Plag giving a non-serious answer made him want to ask for a second opinion from his father. It seems like he wants to give Marinette a present that is as perfect as possible because she's so special. And yes, he was also telling Gabriel about how awesome Marinette is during this time. Okay, actually, when Hikari last watched Cat Blanc, she wasn't mildly annoyed because Adrian seemed to suddenly not friendzone Marinette anymore just because he knew that she's Ladybug, which Hikari felt was the main reason that he said those things and started a relationship with her. Despite all of these signs I have that he likes her, when he found out he didn't really seem excited about Marinette and more about the fact that Ladybug likes him. Feeling forward, Hikari feels that Adrian's limited explicit reaction is probably because Zag didn't want to make it too obvious that he likes Marinette when there are people like me hunting for signs. Even though of course plenty of the signs in the episodes are obvious. But Hikari isn't unstable and really contemplates things when she last reacts to episodes, so I want to take a look at this line again. I've realized that you're not just a friend of me. I've always felt like you were more than that. And now I know why. So no, Hikari. He's more genuine when he says this. 
if he's adding in a phrase that Marinette wouldn't get, like, now I know why, Adrian's felt like she was more than a friend. And the words, now I know why, connects to a thought I had before, that if Adrian happens to start liking Marinette despite loving Ladybug, it's probably because they have similar qualities because, well, they're the same person. Later in the episode, we see Adrian and Marinette as a couple dancing together real quick, and remember the Despair Bear dance scene that I talked about so many times before? Only because I just forget to mention something, so I go back and talk about it. Anyway, they're in a very similar, close position. Of course, Alia set up the position in Despair Bear, but like I said, he didn't have to stay in the position. Or just parallels. So this was another point to show that Adrian was really close to Marinette in the Despair Bear dance scene for a friend. Ooh yes, Ellen Wu, pretty nice catch. I forgot to connect to something all the way from season 1. Yes, she's always felt like more than a friend. So that explains the difference between how he reacts to considering that Chloe is Ladybug versus thinking that Marinette is Ladybug. But also here, Adrian seems to be thinking that Chloe couldn't possibly be Ladybug based on how she acts, though. He wouldn't feel comfortable with that image. Marinette acts similar to his lady, so imagining them as the same person makes sense. I also thought of how it's strange that the creators have Adrian suspect that Marinette is Ladybug three times. I mean, in Where Dad, it seems like he's starting to suspect but later he says that he thought she's a super fan, so I don't know. But it's true that Zag gives us the impression that he's connecting the dots here. There's also Cat Blanc, of course, and Multi Mouse. Adrian has some basis for thinking that she's Ladybug, like how she sneaks away and looks like she's going back in the bathroom, or taking a while doing something after leaving class before finally going in the bathroom. I think Multi Mouse happened after Cat Blanc because Adrian doesn't come to suspect Marinette in the end, so he suspects her again in Multi Mouse. Maybe overall he's suspecting her even more after the events in Frightening Gale, where she looked similar to LB, and Troublemaker, which I talked about in one of my other vids. But despite their similarities, Adrian also has reasons not to think that Marinette is Ladybug. Like how Marinette behaves way clumsier, for example, so she might not be able to do the missions like Ladybug. I touched upon this in the second part of my identity theory video. So given that they seem to show Adrian suspecting three times, or actually even four times if you count the small signs in Frightingale, and given that Adrian has both reasons to suspect and to not suspect her, it seems like he wants to convince himself that they're the same person because he likes both of them, or at least many parts of Marinette. Ladybug showed no negative reaction when he said, I have a girlfriend. Not until she actually saw it. Ryuko, as amazing and daring as I remember. Nice to see you again too, Cat Noir. Is this one of your try to make me jealous moves again? Thank you, Ladybug. Not calling me my lady anymore? Huh? Clearly bothered compared to before. She didn't react much before either because she realized he was joking considering the number of times that he shows her that he likes her or because it's different just hearing it and actually seeing it happen. When she actually sees it, she starts revealing emotions she didn't quite realize she has for him. She'll start to notice when something's not there. Actually, with the love pentagon coming in, maybe, just maybe, we'll see more jealous Ladybug through Katnor's interactions with Ryuko. Now that Hawk Moth knows who many of the miraculous holders are, I think they may still choose to fight in the future missions despite their identities being revealed because it's necessary to stop these opponents that are growing more powerful. So we might see Ryuko more. I mean, they're not just gonna introduce the other miraculous holders for a while and then stop right there just because Gabriel knows their identities, even though it's dangerous. Like, all that for nothing. No, no. Not realistic. Wait a second. Are you jealous of Ryuko right now? Of course not. Sundere! Notice, her reaction was kinda weak. And look at the face she quickly makes. Where are you, Adrian? There are a bunch of other people running nearby, but Adrian turned to Marinette and told her to run and hide like he cares about her safety more. Uh, she is running, you know, Adrian. Are you that blind? Not necessary to animate this. They could have just been running. This made me make a connection to this scene as well. <laughs> I must protect her. 
I didn't add this scene in my previous signs video because I needed the behavior to be repeated more. I thought, oh, maybe she's just nearby. Fan service moment. But to show him worrying about Marinette's safety over others at least twice made me be like, ooh. Thank you, Scarlett, for noticing this. I do sometimes visit the Instagram pages, but I only glanced at who some of the characters followed. The accounts they follow should reflect their interests or people they care about, like Alia and Laura Morano, who voices Clara Nightingale. There are a bunch of baking and fashion or crafting accounts. Also Disney. You even see a hamster one here. <laughs> and yeah, two accounts are about cats. Marinette could have not followed these, but oh ho, guess what this reveals about her. I want you to realize something in stormy weather. Yes, all the way back. We'll get married! Live happily ever after in a beautiful house, have two kids, no three. And a dog! Maybe a cat. Nah, forget the cat. Baby hamster! I love hamsters! Well, she certainly changed her mind. Plus, two cat accounts over one hamster account? I love hamsters! I'm done now. I would like to share some beautiful fan art. Thank you all!